KD all day. Before you, I have our exponent rules. This is everything that you need to know about exponents for the GMAT. And note that I was able to fit it all onto a single page, which goes to show you that there really is no excuse for not memorizing your exponent rules. And even though you should absolutely have them memorized, you shouldn't have to memorize them because all of these can be derived pretty easily, pretty logically. And so really the only reason to memorize them once you understand them is simply because it's quicker. That way you can use them, you can draw on them without even thinking. So let's show why each of these things is true. And hopefully, if you can see where they are derived from, they will be easier to memorize, to make second nature. So our first rule says x raised to the a times x raised to the b is equal to x raised to the a plus b. And one thing to note is that pretty much all of our exponent rules are dealing with either multiplication or division of exponents. There really are no exponent rules when we are adding or subtracting exponents. Within some of our exponent rules, we may have to add or subtract the powers, but there really are no rules for when adding or subtracting different exponents. And so if you are given that situation, don't make up an exponent rule that doesn't exist. You try to find some other rule or some other way of tackling those. Usually making stuff up is not a good strategy. You gotta know what are your rules and you have to know what your rules are not. So this one here, it's saying that when we are multiplying exponents with the same base, we add the powers. So for example, three squared times three cubed should be equal to three to the fifth. And this should make logical sense because three squared is just three times three. Three cubed is just three times three times three. If we multiply these two things together, what are we left with? We just have five threes. Our next rule says x raised to the a over x raised to the b is equal to x raised to the a minus b. So in this case, when we are dividing exponents with the same base, we subtract our powers. So an example would be 3 cubed over 3 squared should be equal to 3 to the first. And again, this should be pretty logical because 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3 over 3 squared or 3 times 3. So two of our threes on our top and bottom cancel out, leaving us with just a single three left over or 3 to the first. Now, this rule here is a little bit less intuitive than the first two. So when we are talking about negative exponents, and so this would be something like three to the negative first. And so I think it's a little bit less intuitive because when you have a negative exponent, it has nothing to do with the sign of your overall value. The only thing that can determine whether or not you have a positive or a negative value overall is the sign of the base. And so I think people wonder sometimes, well, what does this really even mean when you say three raised to the negative first? And really, the only reason negative exponents exist is sort of out of necessity. They have to exist because it is an extension really just of this rule here. In order for this second rule here to work, you have to have a notation when you have a case like this. So here we had three cubed over three squared. But what if we had something like three squared over three cubed? And so according to this rule here, that would be three to the negative first. Then someone at some point said, well, but what does this mean? Three to the negative first. It doesn't really make sense. Well, if we go back to here, this would just be three times three over three times three times three. And so again, two of our threes cancel out, but now we are left with our three on our bottom. So then someone realized, oh, three to the negative first really just means one over three to the first. So the one thing to keep in mind about negative exponents, and this is actually something that sort of makes them simpler in a lot of ways. When you have a negative exponent or a power that is less than zero, that has nothing to do with the sign of the overall value. Only the sign of the base can determine that. And so this just means you've got to do one over, and I prefer to get rid of my negative exponents usually by converting them to one over the, the positive exponent. Over here, this says, so now we are raising exponents 
to an exponent or exponents to a power, x to the a all raised to the b should be equal to x raised to the a times b. So 3 squared all cubed should be equal to 3 to the 6. This should make logical sense as well because 3 squared is just 3 times 3. So if I have that 3 times, just left with 6 threes. This rule here says, so if I have some quantity x times y and I raise that all, that quantity to a, uh, that should be equal to x raised to the a times y to the a. So in other words, the power here, our a, gets distributed. And so this would be something like if I said 3 times 5 all squared, that should be equal to 3 squared times 5 squared. But where does this come up a lot? So this is a very useful rule to know because 3 times 5 is really just 15, right? So this is the same as saying 15 squared should be equal to all of this. So this comes up a lot because what this means is that normally here we said in order to combine exponents when we're multiplying them, we need to have the same base. But this rule here is actually telling us that there's this one case where if our exponents, if they have the same power, well, in this case, even if they have different bases, we can just multiply our bases together as long as they have the same power. So 3 squared times 5 squared actually is equal to 15 squared. But this only works when you have the same power. And the reason it works is because in this case, we would have 3 times 3 times 5 times 5. And so because we have the same number of 3s as we do 5s, every 3 has a 5 to pair itself with a sleep note with 15 times 15, or 15 squared. So this rule here is useful for that reason here. So you can sometimes, you can use this to reverse engineer from here all the way back to here. This rule here, I don't really think of it as an exponent rule. It's more just a number properties rule, but probably fits in, in this video just as much as anywhere else. So this rule here says the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. So this rule is just as important for what it doesn't say. Note that the square root of x squared is not equal to x. It is equal to the absolute value of x. So do not make this mistake. And the GMAT, I've seen many questions where they try to bait you into making this mistake. But the square root of x squared is not equal to x. And the reason for this is, let's say uh, x is equal to 3. And in this case, that would mean the square root of x squared is the square root of 3 squared, which would be the square root of 9, which would be equal to 3. And so in this case, the square root of x squared is equal to x. Because x is equal to 3, and the square root of 3 squared was also equal to 3. However, let's say x is equal to negative 3. Well, in this case, the square root of negative 3 squared, well, that is also equal to the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. But in this case, the square root of x squared is equal to negative x. And it's a little bit confusing because in this case, negative x is equal to positive 3 because x itself was negative 3. And so the square root of x squared it's equal to the absolute value of x, but another way of saying that is the square root of x squared can be equal to x or negative x, depending on what the sign is of x. And so if they were to, if they were to tell you something like, given that x is greater than 0, what is the square root of x squared? Well, in that case, it would be true. The square root of x squared is equal to x, and you would be able to say that. But if they don't give you that information, you cannot assume it. You have to say the square root of x squared is equal to plus or minus x or the absolute value of x. So these two rules here are, again, these are just more number properties types of rules, but it also shows you why exponents are so important because they will come up in exponent questions. So questions where you are being asked to solve for your exponents or solve for the powers in your exponents, but they also love to tell test exponents just in the context of number properties. So your even and odd number properties, your positivity and negativity number properties, and that is why you want to know these rules here very well. And so 
X raised to an even power. So anything raised to an even power is always going to be positive or zero. And the only way to get zero is if X, your base, is equal to zero. Otherwise, it will always be positive. And so if you have something like five to the fourth, so this should be easy to see. This is always positive because it's just going to be a bunch of positives multiplied together. However, if you have negative five to the fourth, that should also be positive, and that should actually be equivalent to five to the fourth, because in this case, we'll have negative five times negative five times negative five times negative five. But when we have an even power, all of our negative ones come in pairs, and so they just cancel each other out. And we're just left with a bunch of positives times positives. This case here, so uh, remember, negative exponents have nothing to do with the sign of your overall number. And so the only way to get a negative number overall is this scenario here. You need a negative base and an odd power because when you raise anything to an odd power, the value, uh, the overall value retains the sign of the base. And so in this case, let's say instead of five to the fourth, we get five to the third and negative five to the third. So again, it's easy to see that this will always be positive because it's just going to be a bunch of positives times each other. But in this case, we have negative five times negative five times negative five. And so when we have an odd power, we always have an extra negative left over. So we have this pair here, give us a positive. Then because we have this negative one here left over, it's always going to be a positive times a negative, And that will give you a negative value overall. So now these are your exponent rules. These are what you should be applying and what you should know. Now let's talk about what you should not be doing. Do not do this. Do not do any of these things. Note that this list is just as long, if not longer, than our actual list, which goes to show you how much effort people put into learning the wrong thing, into making up rules, when it probably would have been much simpler just to use your actual exponent rules. And so let's go through all these mistakes. All these mistakes are actual mistakes. I have seen people make at one point or another, and it is always a tragedy when I see it. So you don't want to do this even once is too much. So in this case, so saying five to the fourth times five cubed is equal to five to the 12. So what does this guy do? He, uh, you know, the exponents with the same base, but in this case, uh, he multiplied the powers. Uh, you're supposed to add them. So this is equal to five to the seventh, not five to the 12th. What is this guy here? Five, five to the fourth times five cubed is equal to 25 to the 12. So this guy made two mistakes here. He multiplied the powers and he multiplied the bases. Absolutely not. Do not do that. That is doubly wrong. Uh, here, five to the fourth times five cubed is equal to 25 raised to the seventh. So here he properly added the powers, but then he spoiled everything by multiplying the bases. Don't do that. Um, five to the fourth times four cubed. So what did this guy here do? Uh, this guy here. Uh, so now we have exponents with different bases. Uh, and here he multiplied those bases together and he multiplied your powers. Absolutely not. Uh, here again, we got exponents with different powers and different bases. This guy seems he multiplied uh, the bases and added the powers. You cannot do either of those things because in order to even add the powers, you need the same base. Here I said double wrong. Why did I say that? So uh, this guy, 5 to the 4th times 4 cubed is equal to 9 to the 12th. So this guy did everything wrong. He, uh, he multiplied the powers, which you... Uh, almost never do unless you're raising an exponent to an exponent and he added the bases. So this guy is really just making stuff up. Not do that. Five to the fourth times four cubed. So here it looks like he added the powers and then also added the bases uh, for no reason. Wrong. Five to the fourth plus five to the cube. So here is, uh, this is the scenario where people oftentimes make up an exponent rule. Um, so here we are adding two exponents with the same base to each other. But there really is no rule for this. The only rule is for and we are multiplying exponents with the same base. And so here this person uh, added the powers because uh, he is confusing this rule here with our multiplication rule. Now, what you can do here, and I don't think of this really as an exponent rule, this is just arithmetic. This is just factoring. Uh, you can factor out a five to the cubed here. So this is not going to be equal to five to the seventh. But if you want to factor out a five cubed here, then you got to, if you want to get back to here, you sort of have to reverse engineer your exponent rule. So Five cubed times what will get us to five to the fourth? Five to the first, then just plus one, because five cubed times one 
gets a speck of five cubed. And so this would be equal to five cubed times six. And this would be true. So you can say this if uh, five to the fourth plus five cubed, it should be equal to five cubed times six or 125 times six. Um, that would be true. This is not true. Five to the fourth plus five cubed is equal to five to the twelfth. So rounder than wrong, double exclamation point, I said. What did this person do? So he, uh, adding, we're adding exponents, so there is really no rule. Uh, and this guy, he uh, multiplied the bases together, which so even if he was confusing it with the multiplication rule, he still did it wrong because you would be adding the powers in that case. This is definitely wrong, not to this. Uh, and then here it looks like added the powers, added the bases, just made that up, don't do it. So your exponent rules, there's not that many. However, there are many ways you can screw them up. So do not do any of these. Just take the time, take half an hour, one day to sit down with this sheet here, memorize these things, do a bunch of drill sets, and that way they will be cemented in your brain.